Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. Now, we are live at the higher this morning because we are getting ready for a two-day symposium that's going to be dealing with crime as a public health issue. And so joining us this morning to talk more about that is the minister in the office of the prime minister with responsibility for communications, the Honorable Simon de Nobrega. Minister de Nobrega, good morning. Good morning, Kimberly. Good morning to everyone here. Good morning to the viewing and listening audience. Yeah. Minister, I, I don't know if you feel the energy as yet, but it's building in, in Hyatt in terms of what we're going to be discussing this morning. But before we get to that, just give us an overview of the reasoning behind this inaugural conference. So, yeah, first of all, yes, I definitely have felt the energy. I felt the energy building around my colleagues as well as we led into this. Yeah. Um, there has been a, a cabinet subcommittee that was put together, chaired by the Honorable Camille Robertson Regis. And of course, the lead ministry is the Ministry of Social Development and Family Services. And that should say something mm -hmm. because we have to see crime and violence, crime and criminality, not just as a policing problem, but as a social issue. Um, so you ask the question, the why? Well, the why is that we have what is not, not just a local problem. Yes, this is a crime and criminality, crime and violence is an issue that, um, that we are, in many ways, I suppose, grappling is not too strong a word mm -hmm. that we are grappling with in this country. But our partners and our, and our brother and sister countries in CARICOM have, are having the same experience. Uh, we are seeing this being a global issue. One only has to turn on the news to see the issues further north from us. Um, those who follow the news will see the issues that are happening in South America um, and across Europe. We the world is grappling with this issue. And there needs to be a shift away from the sort of um, incarceration um, and, and starting from that position uh, to, towards getting sort of, um, I suppose, getting people out of the, the criminal system, out of the penal system, and looking at the inputs to crime. And of course, looking at it from a public health um, perspective gives a much broader and a much more collaborative um, approach to it. You know, Kimberley Vision 2030 is our, is our playbook in many ways. Um, the government has put that forward as government policy. Mm -hmm. And some of the key shifts identified in the Vision 2030 um, speak about behavioral change, speak about institutional change, speak about these things that are all now um, what we are looking at as the inputs. So this regional symposium led by Fernand Tobago, um, led by the Honorable Prime Minister, is in, is in keeping with our Vision 2030 yeah. program. And um, it is just one more step towards us getting to, um, as I like to say, a more resilient, um, um, a, a stronger future state for this country. Yeah. Now, Minister, over the weekend, we would have seen some of the dignitaries and heads of state who are coming in. Yeah. Um, I know, for example, we're expecting the Prime Minister of Jamaica, Prime Minister of Barbados. Who yeah. else can we see, uh, especially from CARICOM, at this conference? Well, I, um, the list is long usually, Kimberly, and I'm not as good as you, so I have to go to, <laughs> I have to, go to, to my go to sheets. To refer, of but course, I can tell course. you, um, the Secretary General of CARICOM is here, Dr. Right. Carla Barnett. I actually had the pleasure of meeting her yesterday. Um, the the chair of, of CARICOM, the president or the prime minister of the Bahamas is here. And of course, you're absolutely correct. Led by Prime Minister Rowley, we are looking at minister, prime ministers from Antigua, uh, Grenada, Dominica, St. Lucia, St. Yeah. Kitts, St. Vincent, as I said, the Bahamas, the vice president of Guyana, mm -hmm. uh, the president of Belize. Uh, we have basically all of our CARICOM partners are here. Um, vast majority of the heads of states, I, uh, I believe, are here um, and will be coming in. Many of them will be, will be participating in the discussions, either in the, in the role of um, opening remarks or we have plenary sessions after all of these things, which is so critical. I have, I have seen on social media and in other places conversations about this being possibly a, some sort of a talk shop. Mm. It is absolutely not. But we have what we have to do is we have to have a starting point where we acknowledge the commonality of our problem. And by doing that, what we also have the opportunity to do is to find where the successes are. So what has worked in your country? What has been the Jamaica experience? What has been the Bohemian experience? 
Um, what has worked there, and can that now be adopted in our own local fight, but also for all our partners across CARICOM? Well, Minister, How can let's we do go that? back to the, to the focal areas. Yeah. As you mentioned, we have to find those commonalities. We have yeah. to get a start. What are some of the areas that we're going to be seeing discussed at the symposium? So let me get to that. <laughs> 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 we, are, we are obviously going to have a packed schedule. The schedule is, um, I was speaking to, to Dr. Barnett yesterday, and um, it is aggressive, yes. but we are all here for one, for one purpose. Mm. So some of the topics being covered today. Um, we're going to be looking at violence and health in the region as an overview. Right. We'll be like, then drilling down into crime and violence from a public health perspective. Of course, we now have to start looking at the inputs into those things. So we're looking at the legal, economic, and social perspectives on crime and violence. Mm -hmm. Um, there is going to be a, a focus on mental health, which is a real issue, especially coming out of the global COVID experience. Um, we're looking at transnational organized crime, which again has a very regional perspective, but a very um, local feel to it. Um, of course, we all know one of the issues that we have is, um, is gun violence. That is very much at the center of all of this. Um, so we will be looking at using litigation to protect gun violence uh, and a global action on gun violence itself. Um, we then have to, to speak about trans-border crime, um, education and youth, which again, we are now looking at inputs again into, into where, where we end up. Um, domestic violence, economic inequalities as a driver of crime and violence. Mm -hmm. Um, the community approach, looking at restorative justice, looking at sports and mediation, and then the judicial perspective, looking at legislation and the juvenile, just, and juvenile justice reform. Um, all of these conversations are going to be led by various heads of state, various um, uh, technocrats and uh, special, specialists in their fields. Yeah. Um, representatives from CAFA, from PAHO, um, Ministry of Health, uh, and of course, Ministry of Social Development, as well as the judiciary, as well as the legal profession, as well as the various ministries yeah. that have all taken part of in the, the actual committee to bring this event to fruition. Mm -hmm. Now, Minister, what I'm also hearing, as well as that whole of government approach that I think the, the government here often focuses on, one of the things, though, is that when we talk about crime, we think about the Ministry of National Security alone. But I know that one of the, the important ministries or the critical ministries at this conference is the Ministry of Social Development. Yes. Um, how is it that we made that shift to look at social issues as we tackle crime, as opposed to, let's say, policing initiatives or strategies? Well, Kimberly, I think one of one of the one of the things that we ha that we have to address is is this notion that um, this is a, this is a policing issue that that crime crime is is the is not the end result but the entire the entire thing um, we have to move away from that and we have to see this as a as a as a local issue that is a national issue that has so many inputs into it. And when we get to the point where we're talking about the judicial, the judicial system, when we're talking about the, um, the policing and, and that sort of stuff, what we're actually talking about is at the end of the process. What we need to do is to look at how do we stop the process from beginning? How do we stem the flow of young people into this life of criminality, into this life of crime, and into the inevitable violence that will occur from it. So that is why we are looking at this as a social issue. It is why Minister Cox is the lead minister and her ministry is the lead ministry. But of course, looking at it from a public health perspective also allows that approach, that approach that is collaborative, that approach that says we need to have inputs from all these sectors in order to ensure that we get to the um, to the desired outcome. Yeah. We identify the issues, we find solutions for those issues, and most importantly, we create an action plan to address the issues that we've identified. Yeah. And Minister, I know as you mentioned, that action plan is coming out of this two-day session that we're having. What are some of the other expected outcomes? I mean, this is a start, but where do we intend to go from here? Well, I am sure that you're going to have um, ministers who are on, um, and 
conversations that are having here that are going to go into it in a lot, a lot more in depth than I will. But there are two main outcomes from this that are, are key. One is a political statement, right, from the heads of CARICOM, which will send the message that there is um, buy-in and there is support, there is political will to get this done. And then, of course, the second is that action plan. Mm -hmm. That action plan is going to be is going to pre be presented, and what that now gives us is a roadmap. That now gives us an approach to it. And then, what we now have to see is the national, the national and the country-led initiatives um, to actually bring that action plan to fruition. So, if the symposium was just that, then I could understand why people would turn up their nose mm -hmm. at it, right? Um, this is not a talk shop. What this is is a jumping off point to get national buy-in, not just from speakers in here, but also from your viewers, from, from private society. And of course, we always also have the private sector here. I heard you and Roka speaking about it as well. Um, this is all hands on deck. Mm -hmm. This is a national um, issue, and we have to have a national initiative where everyone sees themselves as a major stakeholder. This is a starting point for us to, to have a conversation, to understand sort of what everyone is experiencing, right? Um, to understand where the successes have lied, to understand the experiences from the perspective of all our, of our partner countries in CARICOM, to take those on board, and then out of, out of that will come a document that says, this is the way forward. I mean, so if anybody needs to get more information about this uh, conference, is there a website that they can go to? Or will the action plan be published? Or is it just for the heads to now know what they need to do in their respective states? I have no doubt that the action plan will be published. It is going to be a, a, a public document. It is going to be discussed here. Nice. Of course, if people want to get more information and tune in, the first thing I have to say is TTT right online. Right here. <laughs> right? Yes. Um, on air and online. And of course, Safe Caribbean. Um, at caricom.org. Nice. Well, Minister, thank you so much for joining us this morning. All the best. I know it's going to be a full day, full, full, two, full days, two days yeah, yes. of conversation, and we look forward to the action plan to see how we as average citizens as well can also suppress crime and violence that's happening. Excellent. Thank you so much. You. And that was Minister in the Office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for communications, the Honorable Simon de Nobrega, just giving us an overview of the two-day symposium as we look at crime and violence as a public health issue. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us. <laughs>